This is Dr. James DeNicola Antonio. I'm a cardiovascular research scientist at the St. Luke's Mid-America Heart Institute. I'm also a doctor of pharmacy. I'm here to discuss our paper to be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled Omega-3s in Prostate Cancer, Examining the Pertinent Evidence. I'd first like to thank uh, our first author, Dr. Mark McCarty, as well as Drs. Chip Levy and James O'Keefe for their contributions to this paper. Now, the reason why we wrote this paper was kind of to clear the air um, on a paper published by Brasky and colleagues showing that baseline omega-3 in the blood was associated with uh, an increased risk of prostate cancer in, a high, in the higher tertile versus lower tertiles. Um, some limitations of the evidence is that it wasn't a randomized trial. It's not like we gave uh, fish oil supplements to one group and, and another group received placebo or you know, one group ate a lot of fish and the other group didn't. So it can't prove causality. So really, no one should be stopping fish oil supplements based on this data. But it seems like one co-author suggested that, as well as a lot of the media was kind of pushing towards you know, potentially stopping fish oil supplements. Now, just, just to stay right, right off the bat, that we do not support that notion. And certainly, the evidence in the literature does not support this notion. So looking at other data very similar to Brasky, um, if you look at a, a, actually a prior meta-analysis um, looking at blood levels of omega-3s and risk of prostate cancer, a prior meta-analysis found no association. Also another meta-analysis looking at consum consumption of fish showed an actual reduction in prostate cancer as well as prostate cancer mortality. So it looks like you know, consuming fish is actually protective. What was interesting is that prior data um, from the same group, uh, where Brasky, they looked at um, data from Vital, actually baseline fish oil supplementation did not associate with prostate cancer risk. So we're, it's curious as to why they didn't mention this in their paper. Some more limitations of uh, their, their paper also stems from the fact that it seems like uh, the intake of uh, fish and fish oil supplements was pretty low. When you looked at the um, blood levels in, of omega-3s, it was about 3.72% in cases and 3.54% in controls, which is not even representative of what your blood levels would be if you were ingesting fish oil supplements. So certainly you can't say, well, this study, um, you shouldn't take fish oil supplements because your blood levels would be over 5%. So it's really not reflective of uh, a group that was you know, taking uh, a large amount of fish oil supplements. Another um, limitation is the fact that the actual difference between omega-3s in the blood in cases versus controls was extremely small. It was only 0.2%. And you know, we, we kind of feel that there's other contributing factors going on than, than an increase in intake causing this association. So one, one mechanism that we kind of propose is that when you have low intake, such as what was shown in the Brasky paper, you can have an upregulation in estrogen activity, which helps convert alpha-linolenic acid to long-chain omega-3s. And so what you actually have going on is while the estrogen is maybe beneficial to give you more long-chain omega-3s, estrogen has been known to promote many types of cancer, including prostate cancer. So it would be interesting to actually see, well, in the patients that actually develop prostate cancer, was there an increase in estrogen activity? That could be one actual, you know, causative driving factor in, in what, what's occurring in this paper. Another potential mechanism is that insulin promotes um, hepatic uh, delta-6 desaturase, which is a rate-limiting enzyme in the formation of long-chain omega-3s. If you have patients with a higher level of insulin, um, what you get is a higher level of omega-3. And we know insulin can promote uh, numerous types of cancer, including prostate cancer. So really this could just be that patients with a little bit higher of an omega-3 blood level actually had a higher insulin level and has nothing to do with intake of omega-3. Examining the other data besides the meta-analysis of blood levels that didn't show an effect of prior meta-analysis, looking at fish consumption, showed that those who consume more fish versus less have a lower risk of prostate cancer incidence and prostate cancer-related mortality. Um, also data from uh, VITAL, which uh, the Brasky group uh, showed no, uh, no evidence that supplemental uh, fish oil causes prostate cancer. It also showed that fish oil supplementation reduces not only breast cancer, but colorectal cancer. So a lot of the prior data, similar to Brasky's data, indicates the opposite effect. 
We also have mechanistic data um, in vitro as well as in mice that shows that EPA and DHA actually inhibit prostate cancer cell growth. And not only that, we have epidemiological data as well as data in patients with prostate cancer, that those who consume more fish compared to those who don't, who have prostate cancer, live, live longer. And we also have data from the Japanese as well as the Inuit who have extremely high intakes of fish, you know, more than twice that would be seen in the Brasky group. Um, that have some of the lowest rates of prostate cancer and prostate cancer mortality, something along the lines of one-seventh that to those in the Western world. So if, if we really thought that fish oil increased the risk of prostate cancer, we would see this epidemiologically in, you know, in the Inuit and in Japanese, and we actually see the opposite. So this, this is, you know, more compelling data that, you know, you shouldn't stop fish oil uh, supplementation or eating fish based on this one study where all the other evidence shows the exact opposite. We've already pointed out, you know, potential mechanisms of perhaps why this was shown. Also, I mean, you know, potentially why fish oil may reduce the risk of prostate cancer is its ability to modulate COX-2 um, production of prostanoids. So, you know, we, we have some good mechanisms um, as to why there's probably a reduction in, in prostate cancer risk with, with the consumption of fish and fish oil. There's also another side to the story that, you know, we're worried that patients with cardiovascular disease, especially those who've experienced um, a heart attack or those with heart failure, we've had a randomized, large randomized control trial showing an actual improvement in mortality in these patients. And certainly in all the randomized trials that have tested fish oil, there's never been a suggestion that fish oil actually causes prostate cancer. So in summary, we would disagree that there is a potential causative effect of fish or fish oil supplementation, and risk of prostate cancer. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.